Hey guys, welcome to Absurd Reality Case File 003, Calico Ghost Town. As I said before regarding these case files, sometimes they're for fun and sometimes they're for serious. Nah, I'm just fucking around. This one's for fun though. Truth be told, this wasn't the original topic for this case file. I had another facility in mind that I really wanted to talk about, but something came up. So before I get into this, I should probably tell you that story. Cue that awesomely cheesy 80s rewind. Okay, so here's the deal. This is what originally happened. Last year, my buddy got married in Vegas. And one of the things that he wanted to do was go to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. We were stoked as fuck. We were gonna go to the museum and things just didn't pan out. We get there, we wait online. We're in there, we're online for about like 30 minutes and someone comes out, it's like, oh, let me see your tickets. And we didn't have any because we're fucking morons and we had to leave. We were super upset. We made plans like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll meet up next year and we'll try to go again. No, no one's fucking meeting up. We're probably not going to go again. He lives in Washington. I live out here. It's not like, and he just had a kid, so it's not likely he's just going to come out here. Not happening. So last week, my girlfriend and I went to Vegas and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. We're, we're going to the Haunted Museum. We're going to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. And if you don't know who Zach Baggins is, he's the host of Ghost Adventures on the Travel Channel. You know, like thin dude, black spiky hair, glasses. Show's been on for years. And what he's done is he's gonna like he's gone around the world and compiled all these crazy artifacts from haunted areas and paranormal investigations and just like artifacts from places that horrible shit happened. Like he has the the tub or cauldron, if you call it like whatever you want to call it, the cauldron of Ed Gein who like murdered people and like cooked their bodies in, in this cauldron. He has artifacts like that right all around this, it, this, this fucking building, right? So we get up in the morning, we go and my girlfriend's hungover. Like we, we partied, we, we partied in Vegas. We had some fun. She's a little hungover from last night. And when I say hungover, I mean, she was probably still drunk. Um, as I, as was I, we had a rough night the night before and uh, we got up and I really wanted to do this this haunted museum So on the way there they were right we're driving in the car and I remember that you have to sign a waiver So we had to do this e-signature uh, And send it into them in order for us to get in the facility So then my girlfriend's like why do we have to sign a waiver? So essentially you have to sign a waiver that states that you will not sue Zach Baggins or the corporation or the facility uh, that these artifacts are held in because apparently spirits or demons or whatever can attach themselves to you and like bad things happen and blah 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 blah. anyway so you have to sign this fucking waiver we sign the waiver we go there we wait in line it's like a half hour online it's hot it's in the middle of covid not in the middle just after you know things kind of let up during covid uh we have to wear a mask so my girlfriend's hot in a mask can barely breathe it's you know she's hungover like it, she's not having a good time and as we're waiting there, there's like a TV, there's like a bunch of different TVs up and they're telling all the stories of like you know, what's actually in the museum and you know, bad things that have happened to people. Um, apparently ha something happened to Post Malone. So we're waiting there, we get inside and she's just pissed. She just doesn't want to be there. Um, not really happy about it. I get, and I get it, I get it. I, I, if I was doing something I didn't want to do, I'd probably feel the same way, especially if I was drunk, hot and whatever. So we get inside and there's like dolls, like demon dolls, like the doll from Annabelle and shit like that. There's a, a whole room of dolls. There's a bunch of like weird, strange uh, antiques just in this first room. And then a giant, weird mechanical something. Or it, it, I want to say monkey, but I know it's not a monkey because it, it was like a monkey, but it looked like a, like a random white dude in like the 40s. It was, it was super weird. And it's like shaking and moving and, and just real weird, freaky stuff. So we leave the room with all the dolls. Then we go to another room, more weird shit. My girlfriend's looking at me, breathing heavy, you know, and it's hot in there too. It's like super hot in there. It's a little musty. She's just not having it, not having a good time. Go into the third room. The third room has like remains of people. Like the whole wall is lined with skulls and there's two giant coffins in the middle of the room and there's actual dead bodies. And the whole room, you're, it's covered with dead bodies. At that point, I, I knew, she's, she, we gotta go. We gotta go. She's not having it. She's scared shitless. She won't tell me. She's shaking in the corner. She won't say anything, but I, I know for a fact my girlfriend's scared. So we, we make it to the next room and the next room has 
it's like a little waiting area and they're talking about Jeffrey, not Jeffrey Dahmer. They're talking about Dr. Kevorkian and the bust that he had and how he killed a bunch, helped, you know, kill a bunch of people and, and blah, 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 blah. You know, he was famous for you know, assisted suicide, essentially. And that's when, and like they show like this video of some girl passing out in the room. She gets scared and passes out or like a demon, you know, possesses her and she passes out and falls to the floor and like cracks her head open or some shit like that. That was it. That At that moment, my girlfriend saw that. She looked at me, I looked at her and I knew, let's, let's fucking rock. Let's get out of here. Uh, so we had to leave. Uh, we had to leave. So we leave the museum. She's hot. She's upset. She's, you know, still hungover. I'm, I'm annoyed because, like, I really wanted to do this. And I really wanted to, to get some information and use it as this case file. Uh, unfortunately, that obviously didn't work. We finish hanging out in Vegas. And we, we head home. And this is, I think, the, it was on the 5th of July. We're riding home. Every asshole and their mom is in the car driving out of Las Vegas. So we're just in traffic the entire time hours and hours of traffic like not moving on the highway like it looks like that scene in independence day with just the traffic is everyone everyone's there everyone is there there's motorcycles flying by and shit but it's everyone's stuck they can't move it is what it is so as we're making it closer and closer to, to california we come across i think it's barstow or or bakers or, or or maybe even called just calico we see a sign for Calico ghost town. I mean, it's like a mining town. It's fucking dope. It's it's cool. Maybe she felt bad from earlier. But my girlfriend sees the sign and she's like, oh, well, that's cool. Let's, you know, you want to check it out? Like, fuck yeah, we're going to check it out. It's this Calico ghost town. We're going to check the fuck out of it. So we had there and it was, it was dope. It was pretty cool. It's a, it's from like the 1890s. It's all mostly original buildings. We'll talk more about it in the case file. You know, people think about this place as like a, a tourist trap and it is essentially. It's, it's very touristy, it caters to families, but there's a little bit of history behind it and I thought it was pretty cool. And even though we couldn't have Zach Baggins Haunted Museum, I wanted to be able to provide you guys with something else. Thankfully, we came across Calico Ghost Town and things just worked out. We had some fun. I talked to some of the people there. They told us some ghost stories and stuff. So it was a way to really make up for what happened. You know, we weren't able to go to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum, but we were able to come do this thing and it was it was fun and, and cool in its own right. And you guys will hear about it in a second. Okay, back to action. So now that you know the full story, let's rock and roll. As I said earlier, I came across this joint on the way back from Vegas. It's an old mining town that's been around since 1881 and located in the Calico Mountains of the Mojave Desert. This place looks like it came straight out of Red Dead Redemption 2 or Back to the Future 3. It's honestly a cool sight to see and it makes you wonder what life must have been like back in the Old West. I'll tell you this though, I bet everyone who lived there back in the day stunk like shit. It was 109 degrees when I was there. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and I was sweating my ass off. I can't even imagine the smell that must have been coming off people who were wearing full Western garb and didn't shower on a regular basis. No doubt in my mind, anyone who lived in that town, their crotch smelled like vinegar and shit. But I digress, let's hit it. In the 1950s, Walter Knott, owner of Knott's Berry Farm, purchased the land and architecturally restored all but the five buildings to look as they did when they first were built. Nowadays, they have gunfight stunt shows, mine tours, gold panning, and shops to buy trinkets and keepsakes. If you get a chance to check it out, make sure you do. It's a pretty cool tour spot. But what's the real story with the ghost town? Is it haunted? Fuck yeah, it is. No, I'm kidding. I honestly have no clue. When I was there, I didn't witness anything paranormal. But just because I didn't witness anything paranormal doesn't mean that I don't want there to be paranormal activity there. After talking to some of the workers there, they made some very interesting claims. Some of these experiences include random smells of perfume or flowers, shadow people, old cowboys, random footsteps, and the sound of children laughing after the facilities closed. Yo, apparently back in the day, this place was a rip-roaring shit show. They had over 5,000 people come to this town just for silver alone. They had miners, promoters, gamblers, fortune hunters, prostitutes, anyone and everyone came so they can get their hands on some cool coin. As legend has it, the gaudy colors in the mineral stained mountains reminded someone of a piece of calico, which is how the town got its name. The most interesting area on site has to be the calico graveyard. Buried under the handmade stone markers and desert rock lay cowboys, drunkards, teachers, and some people who met a horrible demise. The cemetery is believed to have over 160 graves, but the number isn't exact due to graves either missing or being badly deteriorated. In the 1970s, researchers went there and scoured through old records but only could identify 117 people buried with 20% of them being properly identified. I found that the youngest grave there belongs to a 13-year-old boy named Bobby Stevens. 
Numerous murders and death happened on this land. The graveyard has been disturbed and rummaged through for years. So it's no surprise sightings have occurred because it's probably damn near impossible for any of these souls to rest in peace. Here's some information I gathered on some of the murders that happened there. Albert P. Rowland, a 25-year-old unemployed mining broker, was shot in the chest after trying to break up a fight during a card game at Dickerson's and Mosley's Saloon. There's also the murder of Anastasio Rubio. After returning to town from his latest haul with about $6 in silver and $80 in gold, Anastasio generously decided to treat his friends to some drinks and celebrate. Unbeknownst to him, though, an unknown criminal was lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right time to strike. As Anastasio left the bar and went on his journey home, the unknown assailant snuck up on him and shot him in the temple and chest before robbing him. Anastasio died instantly from his wounds, and the murderer got away. To this day, Anastasio's murder remains unsolved. The four areas in town that seem to have the most paranormal activity are Hank's Hotel, Maggie's Mine, the now-remodeled candy store, and the cemetery. So if you're into the paranormal, but you're just too afraid to go on an actual ghost hunt, this place is for you. This is a must go. They hold ghost hunts every Saturday night. They're family friendly. They're dog friendly. And it's just a fun trip that allows you to be in the mix without getting too scared. This isn't an ad in any way, shape or form. I'm not receiving money from them. I haven't even been on one of the ghost tours yet, but that's something I'm definitely gonna do in the future because I'm really interested in it. And truth be told, I'm kind of a bitch when it comes to going on real ghost hunts. I hope you guys enjoyed this case file. Please do me a favor and smash that like button and subscribe to this channel for everything absurd reality. That's it for this case file. I'm signing off. We are out.